we're going to be installing a gate across the road here and uh, we're going to start with our two posts on either side about 13 and a half feet apart we've left enough room from the gate out to the main road that passes by in this direction for a car to pull in park you get out and unlock your gate and open it and then further down the driveway you can see our gate posts there in the distance we're going to have two logs that pull across. For anyone who's interested, today's video is going to focus on installing the two posts on either side of the driveway. So here's the main road, and here's turning into the driveway. We've got to bring up a lot of stone, because here's the pit that we've dug for the first post. And that goes down there over four and a half feet deep. In a northern climate where you have frost in the ground, frost can shift things and you don't want your gates to shift or obviously they're not going to align and lock properly. And so you have to get down below the frost line, which is why we've dug this in so deep. Uh, unfortunately, we've been having so much rain here in the Maritimes this year that the water table is up really high. And now we've got a bit of an issue with water down in there. And here's a look at the post that's going to go in on this side. It's a several feet long metal post. And it already had concrete down there on the bottom half or three feet of it. Because uh, that had been used previously. And we're just going to rock around that within that drum. When you plan your holes, you want to put them a good distance apart. I would say a minimum 10 feet, if not uh, 12 or more. Our holes here and our posts are going to be about 13 and a half feet apart and then by the time they're hinged uh, we should have 10 to 12 feet of actual gate distance in there and that's so that if you had to bring in heavy machinery say a load of fill on a dump truck or tractors or something excavator you'd be able to get it between your uh, gate so don't go too narrow on that or it becomes a real hassle so we've tried to leave adequate spacing between our two holes and for now we're getting into bringing rock up here so we're going to unload this trailer load and then we're going to go down to our gravel pit and pick up another trailer load and bring it up until we've got enough rock to fill in the hole that we've made here i'm keeping my rock separated large and small stone up here so that when we go to fill that hole in, we can grab rock uh, of a particular size. You usually start with your larger stuff to solidify something in place. And then you start to backfill with smaller and smaller rock until eventually, um, once it's all solidified in there, you can go with just backfilling with the dirt on the top. And that way, it fills in a lot of the spaces around whatever you're doing because you don't want to have uh, large pockets of just air. If you end up with air pockets in your hole, uh, then over time, everything you filled in starts to sink. So we definitely don't want to have spaces because spaces can mean movement and uh, it will mean that we're going to need to keep adding more and more fill. I'm trying to keep my stone pretty close to the hole. So one guy's going to go down in the hole maybe and be able to uh, either grab the rock up here or someone else can hand it to them. Behind me, I've got my wagon back there. More than enough room for a vehicle to pull in the driveway. Maybe even two cars would be able to squeeze in here before you uh, had to get out and unlock the gate to go through. So important you leave that room there that you're not stuck out on the road with your vehicle having to uh, get out and unlock your gate. second gate coming across the road. Not the best trailer for moving rock. That looks like enough rock for one more trailer load. Okay, I've got my 
trailer backed up as close as I can to the hole there. And now we'll unload this. This will be our third load of rock that we brought up. So there's all the stone I think we're going to uh, use for this project. Large stone over on this side, smaller stone over there. And uh, we're going to start filling this in. Before we do that, however, I've got to haul the uh, pole out from over there using the three-wheeler. So we'll go down and unhook the trailer and come back up and do that little project. So we'll put that around the ball of our ATV. And then we'll go over and secure the, uh, the post. Okay, rope's in position. Over to the three-wheeler. We've got to haul this thing up on top of this pile of mud. I don't know how this is going to go. Whoa. We're spinning. Try to assist my machine here a little bit and just move this thing up by hand on top of that pile of mud. Okay, I'm going to have to stop there. Now I'm just plowing a bunch of mud into the hole, and that's not what we want. We want to get rock in there, but I think that gets it close enough that uh, tomorrow we'll just shovel away that mud. We'll turn this thing and uh, be able to slide it down in the hole there where we want it. So, that's where we're going to leave this for today. I injured my knee earlier this summer. I tore my meniscus, and so I'm still having trouble bending this leg. I couldn't get in and out of a hole like this. So big shout out to my dad, 74 years old, and he dug this big hole here in the ground. Uh, good genetics in the family, ladies. So uh, this is the type of project that you don't want to leave this sit for very long. If you were to leave this for several weeks even, and you get a lot of rain, uh, you can find things start to wash into your hole and all the work that was done here to dig this out, it ends up getting filled in. And so uh, we're going to come back, I think, tomorrow morning and try to set this post. I'll try to film a little bit of that and show how we go about um, securing this in the ground. And then anybody who's watching the channel would know how to do this for really any type of post that you're trying to set. If you're building a roof and you want to have a pillar that supports it or a deck or uh, something like this, in this case a gate. And on another video, uh, it may not be for a little while, but we'll uh, show the hinging of the gates over here when we come to that part. Unfortunately, we've got quite a bit of water in the hole and we're gonna have to start doing uh, some bailing. Sometimes. Put a lot of weight to keep it from going that way. We filled large rock in the uh, space over there and all around the drum now we're just taking small rock and filling it in. Just bring it up. Oh, and this is to keep the drum from 
shifting or moving in any way. And then we just clip down that rock with the uh, crowbar here. Here's the progress so far. The barrel's all rocked in there where it can't move. Again, it's pretty flat. Get him in there or not. I think you might have to step out. Yeah. My feet for sure. Too long, shit. That's not going in, is yeah, it? Too long. He's too long. So this here marks grade where we'd be at the surface. Where's the line you put? This one here, is it yeah. now? Yeah. Okay, so here we go. From there to the top, we're at five foot five. Five foot five, that's good enough, really. Okay, five five, that puts your gate a foot up off the ground. Gate's four feet tall. Okay, yeah, perfect. Try to roll this in and that way. It's got to go that way first. Yeah. Uh, I've got to come my way a few yep. inches. Oh, yeah. But we're there and we're up at least vertical. We're looking pretty straight here now. So you consider your gate's going to be up here, right? Yeah, exactly. So right. they're four eight above. So that's uh, that's about four eight, and the gate's four, so we're good there. From there, yep. you got it. I got it. That's gonna be a perfect there. See that little bit of clay there? Yep. Okay, so we're almost done placing rock in there. You build it up with a uh, larger stone to solidify the post nice and level in place. And you try to keep as few gaps in between the rocks as possible. Once we lay the last of the large stone, there's a little bit left to go in over here. Uh, the rest of this stuff here will likely just rake back in. And then we'll turn to the fill over here on the other side and just put the rest of that in to, to fill the hole. So we've used up the entire pile of rock that I showed yesterday in the video and uh, we've got the hole filled in almost to the top, maybe 12 inches or so to go. I'm 
just placing a little bit of sod here at the base of the pole and you'll notice that the ground here kind of comes up like a funnel. There's a couple reasons for that. Uh, number one, over the next few days, this is going to settle some. And so the pile of dirt that's left there, there's a bit I can uh, just grab from that and put it back in place here and keep this uh, cone kind of shaped the way it is as the dirt settles. The other reason for that is that you don't want water to pool around the base of your pole. Right, so if you notice the grade around here, I've sloped it so that water will run off in any direction away from the pole itself. And that allows this clay soil to harden. Uh, if I pick some of that up, you can tell clay when you squeeze it and try to break it, it doesn't break apart. So I have a real heavy clay in here and uh, this needs a few days to dry. And once it dries and hardens, it should actually uh, shed water fairly well. And so that way it'll keep water from ever pooling around uh, the post here, which in turn will keep everything dry and not likely that this will move. So we'll have to let this go over winter to see if we do get any movement by next spring. And I'll do an update at that time and uh, let you know. We're down below the frost line. I think we really did a great job solidifying this with rock. And this shows people now on the channel, uh, if you ever want to put a post in, in this case for a gate, but it could be a load-bearing post, any type of post. If you want to do it for yourself and not even use concrete, you now have a, a method to go and do that. So thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Cheers.